Hello, and welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. I'm Ralph Atanasia from Jersey City, New Jersey. And I'm Asterios Kogados from the Loudest Podcast. There you go. Welcome back, you two. This is uh, uh, like a listener request uh, week. Yeah, that it's we've... Ralph, Ralph Stereos. Yeah, Ralph yes! Stereos. Oh. Two good friends who haven't talked in a while. But... It's not. It's co- I blame COVID, not sure, I blame it your too. inability to return a text. I blame COVID-19. <laughs> hey, listen. I got diagnosed with ADHD just a couple months ago, so all of my bad behaviors are excused. Yeah. Oh, then su- oh yeah, but suddenly there's hyper focus when some hot lady tech. Well, anyway, we're not going to talk about that. We're here to talk that? about a movie. <laughs> we are. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of, um, hmm, I'm not sure, but uh, we are talking about minute 86 of Solo, a Star Wars party. Uh, 86 starts with Lando saying that is an Imperial blockade. And if you uh, subtract 86 from Asterix, you get a Stereos. Did you know that? There you go. Look at that. Wow. No wonder I love this minute. I was told there would be math, <laughs> and there it is. Uh, and 86 ends with, uh, Han, with Lando rather saying you can't make the Kessel Run in less than 20 blank. Hmm. So we are going to do uh, match game style, write it down for tomorrow's episode. So you, you have, if you guys can come back tomorrow, in between today and tomorrow, we're going to write down our answers, what we think. You cannot make the Kessel Run in less than 20 blank. Got it. So here we have, uh, we have a great, uh, we, we were already talking about, you guys weren't privy to this. This is, a, you know, the last couple of weeks we were talking about. How neat it is to see the the Millennium Falcon flying in these kind of atmospheric, these kind of cloud shots, and you get a good sense of scale sometimes where you zoom way out. And here you get this awesome kind of cloud tunnel, and uh, the Millennium Falcon is flying through it, and boom, suddenly we're face-to-face with a Star Destroyer, and we get a throwback of the classic Imperial music. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the Creature from the Black Lagoon style. Yeah. This is also the first time like a blockade makes sense visually. Yes. Because like any time <laughs> in these movies, there's like, cause wasn't there like an Imperial blockade of Tatooine? It was like two Star Destroyers. And it's like, yeah. you can't exit the planet from any other vector. <laughs> Go around them. Yes, exactly. Like, the no, Boo this guy also. is, he's, he's right there like a worm in the straw, man. You can't get past that. Hmm. <laughs> like a yeah, worm they, in the straw. <laughs> not in like a pile of straw, in like a drinking straw. Right. In oh, a God. single straw. Yeah. yeah. They do a really good job. Like they this this tiny little tunnel, and then it's like full up with this star destroyer, and it gives her like a really great sense of scale. It makes the star destroyer like extra terrifying. It's also like in the shadows, like a horror yeah. movie villain. And yeah. then even the TIE fighters, look, I don't know. If this is in the Star Wars manual, but Star they've got Wars evil red manual. lights in their in their cockpits. And it's like, oh, are yeah. they piloted by Cylons? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> it's terrifying. I love it. But also, I know we're not supposed to uh, we're supposed to act like we haven't seen the minutes that come after this. Yeah, but uh, all of this happened already because this is this before, amounts to so. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like we have this great shot. I will probably get into it on the next episode or the one after that. Is it? But like, this goes nowhere. Hmm. This just shows up so that you could sell a, a, you know, a repackaged Tie Fighter with a Solo logo on it. Hmm. Solo logo. Solo, Solo logo. Solo logo. That's um, my Star Wars name. The um, it, it's a good yeah. It it, it really doesn't. Uh, other than the fact that it you know. Detours and detours, wrong, wrong show, I guess. But um, other than the fact that you know they they they're stopped by this thing, and I love how how I wonder if if the did the Empire build this tunnel? Were they involved in the building of this tunnel, or is this like the the fact that the tunnel is just barely the size of a star destroyer? Was that is that coincidence, or is that like well, here's this is the tunnel has to be this wide so that we can we can fly a Star Destroyer into it as need be. 
I think it's just, it's, it's entirely uh, happenstance. It's that size because then you get the cool shot that Asterios was talking about. Sure. But don't forget, there are different size Star Destroyers. I'll forget whatever I damn well please. <laughs> well, no, I was talking to Peter. You, you, please, oh, you, you, you mind your own memories. But like, oh, you know, God. there's, a, what is it? There's, a, there's ISDs, there's SSDs, there's SSSDs. So mm. maybe they just measured the tunnel and sent the appropriate size Star Destroyer. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's like a it's like a trucks. You know how you'll see signs over a bridge that says you know uh, height, hmm. you know maximum height. So I think they're like, oh, the Kessel Run, we gotta send a uh, SD six or whatever the the the, the we gotta roll code two D six. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's just a big crack in the front of that tunnel where everyone who drove their spaceships and didn't read the height. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I love watching those YouTube videos of Star Destroyers trying to get into, into <laughs> the space they tunnel. Call this too narrow. Tower. They call this space cloud tunnel the can opener. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? That's what I'm going to, I'm going to talk like, uh, we're going to, I'm going to talk like I'm on force center for the rest of the episode. There you go. <laughs> All right. Are um, those the same guy, those guys? Are the, no, we, we just saw them in person not too long ago and they're two different guys. Well, mm-hmm. I've never seen them in person. Mm. And Joseph Scrimshaw doesn't sound like a real name. <clears throat> no, no, no. It's, it's, uh, he's not real, but they are two different guys. Right. No. All right. Well, that settles that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, so here comes the Star Destroyer. Uh, that's an Imperial Blockade. What are we going to do? And Han says, hey, relax. I know these guys. I used to be one of them, which again, we, we, we saw him as like a like a grunt infantry trooper, but the scene where he was a pilot got cut out. But um, uh, reinforcing that, you know, that playground lore turns, you know, RPG source book turns, you know, uh, a EU novel turns uh, on screen continuity of. Uh, yep, Han was in the Imperial Army at some point. Um, you know, we get we get a, a reconfirmation of that. He says, hey, relax. I used to be one of them. And they would never, it's, again, it's one of those, uh, it reminds me of uh, Wrong Show, I know, but uh, in Last Crusade, where they're, they're uh, shooting at the uh, Han Solo, at Han Solo, at Indiana Jones and his mm-hmm. dad, and he's like, Dad, they're well out of range, and then they get boom. And so same thing, where he's like, relax, I used to be one of them. They would never waste a TIE fighter on a lowly freighter like this, and all of a sudden you get like 20 TIE fighters zooming out. And that's way more than one. It is. <laughs> well, he's right. They would never waste one. <laughs> Twenty, I sure. De- I can't decide if I if I, I was really on the fence of if I liked this or if it was like a little too clever because you know one of the most iconic things in Star Wars is the Millennium Falcon being chased by by Tie Fighters, of course. Sure. And so, like, they hate that. It's, ship. Uh, they do hate that. <laughs> <ship>. <laughs> Um, but I, in the end, I decided that I do, I do like it because it is, um, and it's a classic Star Wars thing of, especially with Han Solo setting up some big cool thing or some like Han Solo is going to be, he's, he's very confident. And then it turns out, oh, he's wrong about what he was just confident. That's a very Star Warsy thing. Like, you know, sure. It's so, um, ultimately I'll go along with it. And I mean, you know, if you, God forbid, but if you were kind of approaching this in chronological narrative order, mm-hmm. um, this would be the first time that you see the Millennium Falcon being chased by TIE fighters. It'd be like, oh, it's the hey. first time you'd see TIE fighters. Oh, mm-hmm. well, I guess if the, the deleted scene, we might have seen them. But oh, uh, so it made me wonder if TIE fighters were actually a new thing at the time. Is this sort of like the equivalent of, of like, oh, my gosh, the TIE fighters were like the um, what are those things called that they were making a big deal of the uh, Segway? The Segway, exactly. They're go. like, oh, How there's is that these right? new, these new <laughs> <laughs> good points to Ralph. Um, so maybe like TIE Fighters were just brand new at this point. And so Hansel was like, they're never going to waste, you know, these valuable ships on, on us. And then, of course, you know, we turn out, it turns out that they're the, the uh, cannon fodder of, uh, of, the, mm. of the ship. So uh, they yeah, don't value the, these ships at all, as we find out <laughs> later in the series. <laughs> they really don't. Yeah. Now, I, now I, I had a question for you guys. It's funny, guys. Like, um, Who? I wonder if the original directors had 50 TIE fighters coming at the Millennium Falcon. And then when Opie got involved, he was like, let's cut this down to six. And then it's because it's like, 
It wouldn't have been, it would have been funnier if there were like a million TIE fighters coming at the Millennium Falcon, even though I... I don't know. I guess that gets into questions of like, why would they waste a million ships? But uh, what do you yeah, guys but think? No. But then visually, it's like the the bit in A New Hope when like he goes running after the stormtroopers and then there's that door open and yeah. there's like a hundred of them. And he's like, well, this was a mistake. Right. Right. And in the special editions, they made that funnier by adding more stormtroopers. That's one of the only special edition edits I like. That <laughs> and, and putting those rocks in front of those droids for some reason. Right. The rocks yeah. that move. And then in, in the Blu-ray, they added Jabba the Hutt and Boba Fett to that scene. Like two Boba Fetts. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, two Boba's Fett. Two Boba's Fett. Boba's one of them Fett. Always two. Always two there are. Um, I was just looking back to try to figure out, um, is this the first time that somebody has said TIE Fighter on screen? Ooh. Oh, mm. no. Sorry. I had to, I went back through the Star Wars. We don't hear them say TIE Fighter. Empire, we don't, say fighters. we don't, yeah, we don't hear them say TIE Fighter. But, um, in Return of the Jedi, apparently, near the end of, it takes until the end of Return of the Jedi for Lando, of all people, because they split up and head back to the surface, see if you can get a few of those TIE fighters to follow you. Good old Landonis. Landonis, Balthazar, Calrissian. I got issues with the names in this movie. Well, no, what, what's, what's your beef? What's going on? Oh, that's that's. I, I know that for. like the naming conventions in Star Wars are all over the shop. Like it's there's there's no like right or wrong apparently. Mm -hmm. But like Tobias Beckett mm. has to be the worst Star Wars name. That I can think of. Hmm. Uh, which part of it? Is it the Tobias or the Beckett or the combination? Both parts. Hmm. They're to just like regular dude names. Yes. And right. throwing the Balthazar in the middle of Lando's name. Like, that's a. I, I don't know. It just. <laughs> Your headcanon was violated. <laughs> it feels wrong. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, say that Tobias is worse because it's like your it bad is. guy's named Toby. Hmm. Like, Toby. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, here comes Toby. Uh-oh, Toby's <laughs> on the warpath. He escaped Jareth the Goblin King only to grow up to be Wooden ha Woody oh, Harrelson. There you go. That's Jareth is a great bad name because it's <laughs> yeah, Jared it gone is. bad. Yeah. What if you had just like spoonerized it? What if his name was Bobias Tekkit? Is that better or worse? That's a Star Wars name. <laughs> Bobias Tekkit is a Star Bobias Wars name. Is a, Bobias is a Star, that's Bobias. Star Wars as hell. <laughs> Banana yeah, Bannable bias. Is That's right. Tech it is the Tech icing it. on the Star Wars birthday cake. Yeah. <laughs> Shaped like a pork. Even Rio. Rio Durant? This is just like a regular guy name. It yeah. does sound more like a Western character than a or a Western movie. Than uh or like two GMC vehicles. <laughs> A Rio Durant, a 1995 Rio Durant, slightly <laughs> <Yeah>. used. <laughs> With a little it's only got a thousand miles on it. rear view. Breaks oh, down yeah, one day before Ardenian retirement. Green. <laughs> <laughs> I think it doesn't help that Tobias, the most famous Tobias in our age, is uh, David Cross in, yes. uh, in Arrested Development. Mm -hmm. That certainly does not, like, it's like they were trying to attempt to rehabilitate the name Tobias by giving it to a cool guy now. You know what? While I'm complaining, sure. I'm tired. I'm female tired, characters too. in genre fiction being named Kira. It's the laziest thing. They're in everything. I'll second that emotion. Yeah. I, I would listen. I'm open to this, Ralph. I want yeah. to hear. I mean, name the Kiras. Name the don't, Kiras. Don't ask me to do that. I can't. <laughs> I think there have even been Kiras in Star Wars before, right? Have well, there? I think I thought in the was... EU there was Kiras before. Ray was originally going to be named Kira, I think, in, right. in earlier things. Mm -hmm. They were like, yeah, Kira. And they're like, oh, well, we'll, we'll table that. Let's see. Does Kira mean something like queen or power or gem? Like, why is this name over you? I'm open to this. Uh, here, Kira was an astronomical object located in the expansion region <laughs> and, oh. the, and the trailing sectors regions. I'll say she is. <laughs> well, that... <laughs> That clears all that up. I have no further complaints. Hyperspace, hyperspace routes linked Kira to the celestial bodies Barkana, no, Bekrana, Kalinda, Pax, and Runa. <laughs> so. All right. Well, there was a Kira in Star Trek, right? Obviously. Yep. Kira and right. We're all Kira starting. that. Those are table stakes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is the lady in uh, Disney's Atlantis named Kira? 
that's been on my um mind <laughs> it's been on my on my uh, uh kind of queue for things to watch but i haven't yet haven't seen it kira mm. i feel like if you haven't seen it by now mm. but it, it shows up there's a there's a uh, um compilation of of there's an animation compilation called zenimation on disney plus which takes silent moments negotiation from, <laughs> exactly. they've cut off cold communication <laughs> um Take There's silent. Kira Carson in Star Wars: The Old Republic. That's what we're talking there about. We're getting there next, I think. Oh, okay. No, it's okay. Is this entertaining for anybody? There's also Are for me enjoying this. <laughs> okay, Kira Lar, and there's the House of Kira. If we started worrying about what was entertaining for people, we would have. Uh, this yeah. show would have been off the we air. Probably would have stopped <laughs> after a season or two. <laughs> um, Kira Lar is on Echo Base. Mm. Mm. Another Lars. Mm. Not Lars. Lar singular. Oh, hmm. um, and the House of Kira were leaders of the Beast Riders, and eventually became the Monarchs of Onderon. All right, so clearly, yeah. Kira. I think this is only ends. This is only uh, giving it more evidence that right. that uh, Ralph and was we right. There, point out uh, too Dark many Crystal. Kiras. Dark Crystal Kira. Dark yes, Crystal right. Kira. There's Kira Ford, aka the Yellow Dino Range, Dino Ranger, and Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Sure. Everybody's mm-hmm. favorite Power Rangers series. Mm-hmm. There's Kira Supernova, voiced by Sarah Je- Sarah Jessica Parker in the 2013 computer animated film Escape from Planet Earth. Okay. And then finally, there's the movie A Kira, which has <laughs> no Kiras in it, oh. not even one Kira. And you'd which expect the title there to suggest. You, you'd expect there to be A Kira. Right. But no, mm. they should call the movie No Kira. Mm. I agree well, strongly. Doesn't... Doesn't he in Canada? He's going around throughout that whole movie, going like, "Hey, Kira," right? He is Canadian, you're, you're and right, that's why is, they call him Canada. I'm, I'm just remembering Canada is Tetsuo in Canada. Who is, is there? There's anybody? Oh, Akira is the kid that they find. It was like the test project or something like that. It's been a long time since I've read or watched that. So, oh, I know, but I know that mm-hmm. in the dub, Canada is voiced by Leonardo from the old Turtles cartoon. What? Yes. That guy can flex. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's um, got range. <laughs> Not really. He sounds exactly like Leonardo. Now that you know it, yeah. Once you find, once you hit on him, he's well. What? Don't hit on him. I mean, you know, if if oh, you're geez. if you're. At an, in a social situation, and it seems like, you know, though I'm not saying don't, you can't be with him, but just, you know, mind your manners. If there's chemistry there, go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, just, don't, just don't overdo out. it. Don't overdo exactly. it. Be polite. Don't overdo it. But also, but, don't underdo it. Shoot your shot. That's right. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. sell yourself short, everybody. If you see a Leonardo at a bar, just say hi. Mm-hmm. Come on. But if he doesn't seem receptive... There's plenty of other voice actors in the sea. And wait a minute. I don't like saying that like, at all. Uh, <laughs> you think he might look a little blue? Uh, yes. I concur. I get it. Be, I support yeah, you. It's not, it wasn't very good. We can move on. No, I could take us somewhere. Does it bother anyone else that... <laughs> does it bother anyone else that Venus de Milo is just like a darker blue? It's like you couldn't... There's no other color you could have picked here. It's so, so it a, similar oh, to Leonardo. Uh, no, Ralph, you know this. You're a big turtle yeah, there's, head. Yeah, there's a weird thing that they were going to make in the, in the next mutation. They were going to make Leonardo's bandana yellow mm. because Venus was blue. Mm. But uh, then they thought it looked terrible. But there are still like some bits in the opening sequence to that show where you can, or like in, you know, commercial bumpers and stuff where there's a yellow Leonardo. Mm. Mm. Just make, because people needed to know. They make did. Venus yellow. Right? New color, new mm. turtle. Wasn't well, there some uh, when you say Venus and blue? Isn't there some some kind of is there some kind of artistic reference that we? I don't know. Venus don't and know. furs, Venus and blue. well, no, I, I don't, don't think know. you want that in your kids' show. But I think you're combining Venus and furs and Rhapsody and blue. Could be. That's I what's think, happening. I think it would go a little something like this. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, yes. Well, in my mind, let me just state that uh, they all have red bandanas or red. Uh, you know, what is that? Domino it's a bandana. That's a, yeah, nope. sure. And that's all for this week's Ninja Turtles Minute. Uh, no, we, we, those guys are, uh, they're down the hall. Pete, I think um, you're thinking of Shocking Blue had a song called Venus that Banana Rattle later, later yes. covered. So that's, that's the, the connection. Thank of. you. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, I, well, in addition to hearing the word TIE Fighters for the second time, 
So I just mm-hmm. remembered what we were talking about. <laughs> <Come on>. Star Wars. <laughs> um, I do like that uh, um, Tobias, sorry, Bobias Tekkit says uh, mm-hmm. he'll he'll man the ventral gun. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's a good. Uh, um, I, I we we certainly haven't heard anybody say the ventral gun before. Versus the dorsal gun. I'm not sure why he would he would pick one over the other, but uh, I um, guess I, my instinct would be to go to the top gun for some reason. Well, I don't know yeah. why that is. Because you're easy, Maverick. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're going to the danger zone. Um. Yeah. It. it uh, I don't know. I do like the well, but that's. I'll, I'll have a question about that again later. But I do like hearing it as the ventral gun, and we we don't I, ever. I mean, it makes sense. That's to- totally what it would, you know, be called. But it, we don't ever hear it. I think referred to as such. I specifically remember that line sticking out to me as weird when mm. I saw this movie for the first time. Being like, the "Ventral gun." If there's mm. anything I'm not used to Woody Harrelson saying, it's the phrase "ventral gun." Right. And I remember like trying to do it over and over, like. I'm on the ventral, cu- like I was trying to do like a Woody Harrelson impression to myself saying like, I'm on the ventral, cu-, and I couldn't get it. Oh. He's not here, I'm sorry. Oh, I was scared. <laughs> By amazing we were tech. Have to, a man, no, we've, we've been saying all good things about him. I, we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't take it back. If we no. found out Woody Harrelson was listening, I'd be like, oh, all right. I think we've been. I- Ho- Hoodie Warrelson, I believe. Oh, yes. Hoodie Warrelson, who plays my, Elias Tekkit. My issue is give, it's like Woody Harrelson, I don't think should say the phrase ventral gun. I think that's a failure of, of casting and directing, not of acting. But, but hmm. what do you guys think? It's it's in the proud tradition of giving actors lines in Star Wars that it's not <laughs> fair to make them say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Star Wars generally does a good job of avoiding techno babble, a la Star Trek. But I feel like this particular uh, sequence coming up, we get a, a bunch of like, well, what if we reroute the blah blah blahs through the isolated converters? And they're like, try it, you know? Right? Yeah. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, we could have called a, him a Joseph bunch. Scrimshaw. That would have been a better name. Hmm. Hmm. Joseph. Her name is Joseph's in Star Wars? I don't know. Or even Joe's? Or Joey's. There's Luke. There's Luke. There's Luke. There's Are Luke. there Jacks? Luke? Luke? Jack is the most common movie name, so it makes me wonder, and are there? It's the most common, like, Zoomer name, too, I feel like. Like, everybody who had a... Every celebrity, at least, or every... Almost everybody named their kid Jack for a little while in the early oddies. Yeah. Hey, whatever happened to the the last name convention in star wars of like convention noun verber oh right hmm. like skywalker dark lighter dark lighter yeah and Mouth, then nobody Mouth else milker. right right um, of course tobias move milker <laughs> that would have been better <laughs> yeah it's a um, good question we haven't seen one of those in a while yeah they dropped right. that right away Hmm. Yeah, one of those peculiarities just in Star Wars and not what in could other... be could be like a Tatooine, like a rural thing, you know, like out, mm. out in the sticks, people are still kind of named after what their family did. <laughs> and they, what exactly did the, the like, uh, you know, Skywalker family do walking there, in Pete? the sky or light oh, in the dark my... or killing the stars? Foolish me. <laughs> <laughs> Lighting the, the dark. <laughs> I mean, it's right there in the name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, what's that? I had something about the Tie Fighters. Oh, please! Um, these, something of course, are not your. Fighters. These are not your grandfather's Tie Fighters. These, oh, the, you'll notice, they have a cockpit, and then they have a little kind of like gun turret on the side uh, next to it. And um, as Ralph mentioned, I'm, I'm sure part of this was also to sell other, to sell more different tar- Tie Fighter toys. Um, this is the Tie RB Heavy Starfighter, uh, mm. also known as the Tie Brute. B R U T E, not B R U T. Type root. Um, yeah, sounds definitely <laughs> like a wine. Manufactured by the Fabergé company. <laughs> it's uh, a little drier we- than your standard tie. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, the uh, the Wikipedia mentions that they cost ninety thousand credits or forty thousand credits used. Hmm. Why? <laughs> what? It was buying they didn't list the buy it now price on it, but I don't know what the uh, so that's mm. a strange thing that the uh, moment you fly it off the deck, it loses yeah. fifty thousand credits worth of value. That's just how it is. I love that Wikipedia gives you the MSRP and also gives you the blue book price, right? Mm-hmm. But what is happening? Also, like <laughs> key things that you're looking for sometimes aren't there. But price of a used Tie Fighter, that's on there. <laughs> probably because that's come up in. I'm betting that that is. 
That's come yeah. up in role playing the game. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, or video game, you know. So at some point, somebody had to know, like, oh, what if I wanted to use Tie Fighter, and they had to like figure it out. Yeah, I clicked on the footnote next to it, and it said it referred me to some like the guide, the complete guide to Tie Fighters and starships or something. So yeah, you clicked I'm sure on the footnote kind of for it, and it just gave you a wedgie. Dump <laughs> <laughs> my head in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. this is what you deserve. <laughs> the idea that there are uh, that there would be a used tie, I would think a used tie fighter would be worth more because it's so rare. Uh, yeah, it's like oh, yeah. you survived yeah. one engagement in this. <laughs> it came That's true. Back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, is it is it signed? Does it have a certificate of authenticity? Can we can we photo match it to a, a specific battle? Yeah, proof that it was. This yeah. was the one that bumped into Darth Vader right before oh. uh, the, the Death Star was blown up. Uh, sir, one of the Tie Fighters is. It's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what we're supposed to do in this situation. We don't even have I a landing know. pad. <laughs> we only have a launch Lateral thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we reverse the polarity on the launch? <laughs> oh. The gas tanks on TIE Fighters don't even open. Like, it has one tank of gas, and yes, that's it. Yes. You can, it's never... They're single yeah. serving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would make them brute snacks, I guess. Mm. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and when one, the one crashes, and it, the wings come off, and it did it, 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 it goes like that, it's a, fruit, it's a brute roll-up. Nice. Um, oh, there you go. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. um, I love that that's the action that the toy TIE Fighters always do. But the wings because they don't... Pop, it's not like... Stuff. Yeah, it's not like the X-Wings where like the, the S-foils open up or whatever. Like, it's just, what do TIE Fighters do? I don't know. Explode? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's all I had for minute 86. Um, can you guys come back more than I had. tomorrow? Oh, hell yeah. There's I'm excited, more of this excited. scene. And, and yeah, don't forget, I'm... we have to find out what, what you can't make the Kessler run in less than 20 that's right. Of. Don't forget to weigh in, listeners and our guests. And um, then uh, hopefully, so we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, um, hey, uh, while you're at it, um, if you want to chime in with your answer to what there's uh, what what there's twenty of, uh, why not hit us up on social media? Uh, we're at Star Wars Minute on Twitter at the Star Wars Minute on Instagram. Our Star Wars Minute is our subreddit, and uh, StarWarsMinute.com slash Facebook will take you to the Facebook group star wars minute listener society facebook spacebook group and we will uh read all Baseball. our answers here tomorrow on a brand new star wars minute. star wars minute you guys are still doing this <laughs>